So guys, before we get into this video, I wanted to mention one interesting thing. Anixa Biosciences will be hosting an AMA on Reddit December 7th around 12 p.m. Eastern Time. So tune in, check out their AMA, and uh, let's get into the rest of this video. What's going on you guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital and welcome to the video. In this video, we're introducing an exciting new company to the channel, and that company is called Anixa Biosciences. Now, Anixa Biosciences is focused on the treatment and prevention of cancer. So it's a very unique biotechnology company, which we're going to be talking about in this video, going over all the key points, the website, the investor presentation, and a quick look at the stock. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I love introducing new companies to my community, to my network. So take a look, guys. I wanted to say for full disclosure details, this is a sponsored video. Always check the description down below for full disclosure details along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer and always remembering that these videos are not financial advice. With that being said guys, I bring you Anixa Biosciences. So the first thing I wanted to take a look at was in fact the stock and it is traded on the NASDAQ under ticker symbol ANIX. It's got a current market cap of just over $100 million with a 52 week range of $2.75 all the way up to $6.45. Currently trading at $3.34. So as we can see, over the past month, taking a look at the monthly chart, the stock has had a really nice bounce. We'll see how long this lasts. We'll see if this is, you know, a change of trend, start to a new uptrend. Things are looking a little bit better for the markets in general. So hopefully this carries on and, um, you know, the biotechnology sector gets a bit of a boost. But individually, if we take a look at the six month chart, it does look like this company has bounced off its 52 week lows. Hopefully things keep going. Now might be an awesome time to take a look at Anixa Biosciences. So before we dive into their website and their investor presentation, I want to simply pull up some very recent news when it comes to the company. So Anixa Biosciences announces European patent on ovarian cancer vaccine technology. So if you are looking for the most up to date news when it comes to this company, they have recently announced a very interesting piece of news and the stock seems to be doing pretty well since then. Any positive news on patents, intellectual property, usually translates into, you know, a bump in the share price if it is interpreted as good news. So let's jump into their website now, and that is simply anixa.com. So Anixa Biosciences is focused on the treatment and prevention of cancer. So Anixa Biosciences is developing therapies and vaccines that are focused on the critical unmet needs in oncology. Anixa's programs are using the body's immune system to take multiple approaches in fighting cancer. CAR T-cell therapy to treat cancer and vaccines to prevent cancer. So in terms of therapeutics, they've got CAR T. We are developing chimeric antigen receptor T-cell or CAR T based immunotherapy drugs which genetically engineer a patient's own immune cells to fight cancer. Then vaccines, so the breast cancer vaccine, we are developing a revolutionary vaccine technology focused on preventing breast cancer, specifically triple negative breast cancer, the most lethal form of the disease, and an ovarian cancer vaccine using a similar mechanism of action as our breast cancer vaccine technology. We are developing a vaccine to prevent the occurrence of ovarian cancer. So very useful and unique goals that this company does have. If you're looking for more information on the company, please head on over to the investor portion. There you can find some more information on the stock, the most recent news, and of course their investor presentation, which we're gonna dive into right now. So, Anixa Biosciences, corporate presentation, and this is as of October 2023, so very recently. Their Snapshot, a clinical stage company developing first-in-class products to treat and prevent cancer. Robust pipeline, strong clinical data, strong financial profile, key partnerships, and a significant total addressable market opportunity. So here we have some of their clinical programs and development partnerships highlighted here. Now this is all in the area of oncology. Two of them being the vaccines, which we briefly just talked about, and the other being the T-cell therapy. Here we can note some of their partners. We've got the Cleveland Clinic, the National Cancer Institute, that is a big name, and then of course the Department of Defense, among other partners. So let's talk a little bit about their vaccine program when it comes to breast cancer. So their breast cancer vaccine, retired tissue specific protein, 
expressed at periods of life, but no longer expressed as we age. So I wanted to state that there are some very scientific terms in this presentation, and we're simply gonna highlight the key points here. When it comes to biotechnology companies, having a decent know-how of the research or the area that the company is in is also an essential part of your due diligence. And if you don't understand it, I highly encourage you to contact Investor Relations, do some of your own research as well. I simply wanna highlight the opportunity and the business that they're in, what they're targeting, and you know what the company is really looking to achieve. So we've got some preclinical studies. Vaccination prevents breast cancer. So as we can see here, vaccinated mice did not exhibit autoimmune damage, while single T cell infiltrates were seen in non-lactating breast tissue. 100% of vaccinated mice did not develop breast cancer, and there we have 80% of unvaccinated mice developed breast cancer. Currently in a phase one trial, so conducted by Cleveland Clinic, funded by the US Department of Defense, an open label phase one dose escalation trial. There is some information on the phase one trial. Positive clinical results as of April, 2023, that is this year. Enrollment of women who have had TNBC and have undergone standard of care, but are at risk of recurrence, 42% of TNBC survivors will relapse within five years. Unfortunately, MTD reached in Q4 of 2022. Data from all vaccinated women tested to date presented at AACR in April of 2023. 16 patents closed through July of 2023, so no safety concerns. Autoimmune responses observed at all dose levels. All patients had some immune response in test and intensity of responses varied with patients. As we know, for breast cancer vaccine, there is a significant market opportunity here. So over 3.8 million breast cancer survivors in the US, millions more harbor mutations, placing them at high risk. More than 80 million women are currently 40 or older in the US alone. Millions more age into this group annually. When it comes to outside the US, tens of millions of women who are breast cancer survivors, large number of women harbor high risk mutations. Approximately 1.4 billion women are 40 and older outside of the US. If this vaccine works, as we hope, we expect every woman in the world to be eligible. So now we've got the vaccine program for ovarian cancer. Also a retired tissue specific self protein. National Cancer Institute funding and collaboration. They have a funding and collaboration agreement with the National Cancer Institute, along with the collaboration with Cleveland Clinic. So there's a little bit more information on that specific vaccine program if you are looking to dive a little bit deeper into the details. Now we've got the T-cell program for ovarian cancer. CAR-T stands for Chimeric Antigen Receptor T-cell. CAR technology has made great inroads in B-cell cancers. Durable responses, 50 to 80% of patients, multi-billion dollar valuations, and big pharma deals. Novartis, Kite, Juno. As we can see here, massive numbers behind those acquisitions are opportunity. Conventional CAR T has not worked clinically in solid tumors. Our unique approach. Anixa has a novel technology for making CAR T work in multiple solid tumors, beginning with ovarian cancer. Anixa's unique and targeted SER T approach for solid tumors. So follicle stimulating hormone receptor, medicated CAR T technology. So here is a little bit about their treatment versus other CAR T programs. Novartis, Juno, Kite, and others working on B cell cancers. So I wanna talk about the first potential anti-angiogenic CAR T therapy, exclusive worldwide license, from the Worcester Institute, we believe our SIR-T approach will work in solid tumors, especially ovarian cancer, while others have failed. So far, they've treated three patients to date. Patients exhibited no major safety concerns. So in summary, I wanna sum up this company. They do a great job breaking it down. Capital efficient, low cost business model, develop programs with partners, leverage existing infrastructure of partner, maintain low overhead and cash burn, allows for multiple orthogonal projects, potentially out licensed programs to pharma for late stage clinical development and commercialization, burning approximately 6 million a year, which, which for a company that size sounds pretty good. So their financial summary, 
25 million plus in cash, cash equivalents, and short term investments as of July 31st, 2023. 5 to 6 million annual cash burn since 2017. 31 million shares outstanding as of July 31st, and no debt. So, a relatively tight float and share structure, you could say, with not too many shares outstanding, low cash burn, and working with partners. You know, those are some key points that I wanted to highlight in this presentation. So, value creating near term clinical catalysts, multiple catalysts over the next 12 months across our clinical pipeline. And here we can see the timelines, which is very, very important. When it comes to biotechnology, something that I've learned over the years is be mindful of what is the actual timeline? How, when, when do they expect to see results? These are all very important things to take into consideration as a biotechnology investor doing your own due diligence on these companies. We're finally gonna wrap this up by talking about their investment highlights. So they've got a robust pipeline focused on prevention and treatment of cancer, strong clinical data, two clinical trials in progress showing positive results, strong financial profile, 25 million of cash, no debt, and capital efficient business model, key partnerships, the Cleveland Clinic, Mofit Cancer Center, NIH, NCI, and the DOD, significant total addressable market opportunity in the US, 3.8 million women living with female breast cancer, over 80 million women potentially eligible for the vaccine, 230,000 women living with ovarian cancer. If you are someone who loves to invest in biotechnology companies, if you love companies that you know are researching cancer, prevention, treatment, you know, I'm sure that we all know someone who's been affected by this and a biotechnology company focused on the treatment and prevention of cancer, because we all know this has affected someone we know. Please take a look at Anixa Biosciences today. It's been a pleasure covering this company and we'll see you guys in our next video.